bring into the conversation the Democratic governor of New York, Kathy Hochul. She's a member of President Biden's reelection campaign advisory board. Governor, thanks for being on with us um, this morning. As we were just saying, Donald Trump trumpeted that he was the one with his three judges appointed to the Supreme Court who overturned Roe versus Wade. It was one of his proudest achievements, he said. And now, if you watch that video and his subsequent statements since Roe, since Dobbs, that he's running away from it because he has seen the political consequences of what he achieved. So what do you see in that statement as you watched the former president yesterday? Well, thank you for having me on the show again. I had one simple statement. How do you know when Donald Trump is lying? When his lips are moving. And that has been played out time and time again. Women don't trust him. You're going to say something in March. You support a national ban. In April, the polls don't look so good. So now you're backing off. But all of a sudden, you're going to lose evangelicals. And you're going to keep going back and forth up until Election Day. And one thing. Donald Trump has been indicted all over this country, including right here in the state of New York. He just indicted himself in the eyes of women all over America, and they are going to pay back uh, what he has done to them, destroying their lives, their freedom, that sense of security that you have control over your own body. So the gig is up, Donald Trump. You just went too far, and no one believes you. So, Governor, uh there are some abortion uh, ballot uh, access uh, issues on s several states' ballots this November, including the state of Florida, the state of North Carolina, to potential battlegrounds that Democrats now feel like could be in play because of this very issue. And we know the power that abortions had at the ballot since Roe v. Wade was overturned. Weigh in, if you will, how you forecast this playing out between now and when voters go to the polls. I would love to have abortion on every state ballot in America. This is an opportunity for us to be heard. Now, the states that it's on, New York State, we're protected here in the state of New York. I'm the first female governor of New York. I'm the first governor of New York who's actually been pregnant, someone who didn't even know I was pregnant for the first few months. So this six week is absurd. But down in Florida, Florida's sometimes vote spread, but there's a lot of people from other parts of the country who settled there and their voices will be heard. So I feel much more confident about the politics surrounding the election in Florida because of this, but every state, the record is there. When people have a chance to voice their position on abortion, they stand with the women, unlike Donald Trump. So this is a jolt for the election. We won't know for sure exactly by what margins, but this is a big boost for Joe Biden. And Trump fell into this. He should have kept his mouth shut because now he's antagonizing everybody. So we could say what day was the election really lost? It may just have been the day that the solar eclipse occurred. And for just a few moments, he thought he could block out the truth with his darkness. Well, the truth will shine again, just like the sun came back out. Uh, hi, good morning, Governor. It's Jennifer Palmieri. Um, in your state, you, know, you all have passed um, abortion protections, but there could still women's rights could be taken away under a national abortion ban. Uh, your state has some tough congressional races coming up in uh, in the fall. Republicans won a number of uh, took a number of seats away from Democrats that helped give them the majority. Do you think are uh, are women in New York worried about this as a national abortion ban? And is that likely to be an issue in the house races in new york of course it will and we just saw that a microcosm of what will happen in november is what we saw in a special election with tom swazi right. now tom swazi had run against me in a democratic primary but i said i want to know if i'm going to support you will you stand strongly with women's right to reproductive freedom and stand for the right to an abortion and he did he leaned into that in the primary and i'm sorry in his special election and he won in a district that had been held by a Republican. So there you have the playbook. Yes, talk about it. Lean into it. This is an issue that resonates not just with women, but fathers of daughters who want them to have the rights. And, and people all across this country, because there's also the slippery slope that Clarence Thomas spoke about and alluded to, that others can bring cases and strip away rights, not just the right to reproductive freedom that we've cherished in this country for over 50 years, but other rights as well. So this is the shot across the bow. And if people don't wake up and pay attention to this, we'll have dire consequences. And I thought what was a, a the most, one of the most effective political ads I've ever seen, and I've been an elected official for 30 years, 
was Joe Biden's ad when he showcased the real pain that women all across Americans, America are now suffering. You know, a young husband and a wife trying to have a baby and what happened when she couldn't get care when that baby was miscarried. So this is painful for families and it's all because of Donald Trump who took credit for putting those Supreme Court justices in place and judges in places like Amarillo, Texas, that are trying to take mm -hmm. other rights. We're going after IVF, Mifepristone. So I think the playbook is clear, but it should not come down to politics. These are American rights that we cherish. Yeah, I mean, this is about rights. Yeah, it is. That's what Nancy Pelosi said last hour. It's about freedom. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I loved uh, what, what we just heard, which is you can't say you're for any exceptions for rape or for incest or life of the mother if at the same time you're saying, I agree with what all the states are doing. Right. That's no protection at all from the extremists who are passing legislation that make young girls who have been raped flee their states. I mean, it's just, uh, again, it was the most meaning, me, it was just meaningless. Yeah, and Donald Trump takes the credit for getting Roe overturned. That's what he did. That's what he says he did, and he yeah. brags about it. And the punishment that he told Chris Matthews that women should have, we're seeing that across the country now. Yep. We're seeing that in the very impactful uh, ad that Governor Hochul brought up that President yeah. Biden has put out, a young couple suffering greatly because of the punishment that Donald Trump thinks women should endure yeah. instead of have the right to have abortion health care. New York Governor Kathy Hochul, thank you very much for coming on the show this morning. We appreciate and, it. And you, and you know, he, he just washed his hands, actually. He, what he did basically was he washed his hands of this issue, of course, in a way that, as we've seen, upsets people uh, on the right, upsets people on the left and upsets women on all sides of the political spectrum and people who love them. He'll never be able to wash his hands of the pain that he has caused to mm -hmm. countless Americans yeah. because of denying them the health care they need. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.